Charlie from Real Brooklyn Films here, and welcome back to In Frame Brooklyn. It's been quite some time, and I am at the end of the documentary filmmaking process. The film is finished. It took 10 months, uh, and <laughs> a large part of my soul, but it is done. We're now looking for distribution, and um, the film came out much better than I had ever thought it would, and that's a whole other video, which I'll get into. Um, but this video is going to be about the making of the documentary uh, and mostly the gear that I actually got in advance of making this project. Um, as you all know, uh, I actually went into this with old gear and I had to replace almost everything. So it was a learning process. However, some stuff worked great. Some stuff was an utter failure. Some stuff was disappointing. Uh, but for the most part, everything worked really well. So I want to go through camera, sound, lighting, um, post-production software that I, that I wound up getting in the process to make the, the documentary better. Um, so this is probably going to be a two-part video. So as you all know from previous videos, I went out and I bought myself the Canon EOS R6. And it was the best purchase of this entire project. Uh, making the choice to go with the mirrorless camera instead of like a, a, a you know just a regular video camera was financially the right decision, stylistically the right decision, cinematically the right decision, and practically the right decision. Because even once I rigged out the whole camera with my small rig and and everything else and the rails and the V battery and a lot of other stuff, it was still less than the eight thousand dollar Canon that I couldn't afford. So. Financially, it made the right it made the right choice, but having the, the EOS R6 made my life so much easier. Being a one man band on this on this shoot, um, I set my camera up with the Ninja Five and my my my, my sound box, my my little preamp that I got, and it was one two three. And considering I had to set up sound and lights and camera all by myself, and get my interview in the right place, figure out the right place to shoot, do it all by myself. Knowing that I can turn my camera on and it would work was, was just a bonus. The autofocus didn't matter where I put anybody. They just, it, it was right on the money. There was one slight issue, which I'll get into later, but for the most part, it was spot on all the time. And going into the Ninja 5 meant we were coming out ProRes right into Final Cut, which means I was shooting during the day, editing at night, which was really important because after having 100 hours of footage when I got home, Having gone through some of it on the road definitely made my life easier. Although, as I got further into the project, closer to week four and five, I did a lot less editing at night because I was really tired um, and overwhelmed. But then again, that's part of the actual documentary video that I'm going to make about the actual making of the, video, of, the, of the movie and what that meant. But that's another video. But anyway, camera-wise, the R6, the Ninja 5 was just amazing and the small rig setup that I, that I that I did uh, made it easy for me to get to handheld put it back on the sticks take it off and and one two three and using the full cam quick release that was just great I had it on everything I had it on the rig I had it on the camera I had it on the Moza gimbal so I could swap out everything Oh, and on my small tripod, too. So two tripods with full cams, the, the rail system with full cams, the camera with full cams. Um, <laughs> it's the best little invention. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my full cam review. Um, you got to get these things. They just make life so much easier. So as far as camera went, all my purchases for the camera, I think, were, were, were spot on. Um, I highly recommend the, the R6. Everybody's like, oh, it overheat. And it doesn't overheat. Even when I was not shooting to the, to the Ninja 5, there were a couple of times when I was just out, like handheld shooting, with just, just to, to the flashcards. Um, there was, in the memory, not flash, the, the memory cards, um, there was no overheating. I didn't have any problems at all. And of course, shooting to the Ninja 5, um, there's never any problems. You can you can shoot all day, and with the V batteries, I mean those things just last so much. I, I did not have to worry about ever running out of batteries. So I got um, speaking of batteries, let's transition <laughs> into batteries. 
Speaking of batteries, let's transition. Speak, speaking of batteries, let's transition. <laughs> speaking of batteries, let's transition to our batteries. Um, I got the Indy Pro full brick uh, V mount batteries. I got two with the charger. Um, it was about five hundred dollars, but you know what though? <laughs> it was the best five hundred dollars I spent because at no time while I was on the road. Did I ever have to worry about running out of batteries for the camera or the Ninja 5? Plug them in, good to go. And it's not that heavy. So, you know, running handheld with the V-mount battery wasn't too bad at all. And stabilizing the, the rig, the small rig with the rails against my chest, it was great. Um, so that was not a problem. So taking the whole worry about having to worry about charging batteries. I mean, I brought the little ones with me just in case. Uh, but for the most part... The, the, the Indy Pro V-mounts, man, they just rock. Um, I can't say enough about those. Let's talk about my favorite little thing. Follow Focus Gears. Yes, my friend Sean down in Atlanta, who, by the way, sponsors this video, and we'll talk more about that afterwards. Follow Focus Gears makes these amazing rings that go on your lenses to allow for focusing for zooming in and out and they fit on any lens anywhere that he makes them for any for any lens you can imagine he has made a ring for it or will make a ring for it if it doesn't exist already um it rocks and i gotta tell you putting it on my my my, my 24 to 105 having that 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 uh tilt to follow focus was was great. I mean, the, the autofocus on the camera, I didn't need the focus, but being able to, like, zoom in and out to exactly what I needed, when I needed it, while I'm trying to do other things, with, without the follow focus ring, it wouldn't have worked. So I highly recommend follow focus gears. Go call Sean. Buy rings for every one of your cameras because you will be happy and you will thank me. And the holidays are coming up, so buy rings for your friends who are photographers also. Uh, follow Focus Gears in Atlanta. Sean, talk to him. Sponsors of this, of this, uh, of this video only because their product rocks. Um, I don't do sponsorships really at all. But anyways, so Follow Focus Rings, excellent. Talking about uh, small rig, my small rig rig. Um, made my life so much easier. I know there's a, there, there's a lot of others out there, which I'm sure are very good, and um, Condor Blue and some other ones. But for me, the, 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 the small rig cage and everything I put on it gave me the exact rig that I was looking for. Um, obviously, you know, we know they fit each camera, blah, blah, blah. But between the handles and the, 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 the rails... Um, for everything that I needed, I was able to set up this camera so that I could really get the most out of being a one-man band. Including, um, I got myself a, a, a Mafra clamp that fit into my preamp, and I clamped that to the rails. So I had my microphone on the preamp to the side of the rig. I had the, the, the Ninja 5 on top with the Ari mount, the handle that wonderful handle, um, and then the, the, the rail system, and then the V-mount battery on the back, and you can see in the pictures, um, compact, good to go, and, and just, oh, and also the, the, the uh, Tilta uh, follow focus and the Tilta map box, by the way. The Tilta map box rocks. It's not too big. The, 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 the hood itself is... Uh, um, is great. It, it really locks into place when you want it to. Close it up and it protects your lens. And there's just, I can't say enough about that, the, 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 the Telta stuff. Um, so yeah, the rig was great. No problems with the rig. Uh, I highly recommend all of that stuff. I just, it, it, five weeks on the road and it came back in the same condition that it went out on. So good to go. Lighting was a little hit or miss on this project. Um, you know, coming from, you know, the film world where I had lights that were gigantic and hot and you had to plug them in, um, moving to the, you know, the, the LED world where everything is smaller and some works on batteries and some stuff gets plugged in, 
Um, I immediately gravitated to the small battery operated lights because it seemed to me those would be great on the road and, and I'll, you know, I don't have to worry about plugging stuff in. Well, some were good, some were less good. But um, let's talk about what was really good. Godox SL60. Yes, you all know it. Probably most of you have one or two. Um, I actually started with the... I, I purchased two of those Elytra Pro minis that are, that are you know, they're, they're, they're battery operated. And, you know, I was sold by the video that I watched, you know, oh, the battery life is amazing on these things. And, um, well, you know what? It, they're not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I turned those things on at 50 and they were gone like that. One of them, I would charge it and it would be gone like within five minutes of me running it. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, $250 per for, 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 the, for those, those Lytra Pros. Uh-uh. No good. So then um, I got a, uh, a Vizi uh, G2, which is great. Th that thing is amazing. It lasts forever. It's, it's RGB. It's got all kinds of stuff. Fantastic. Wonderful. I got that. But that wasn't going to do the job on the road. So I watched some videos like all of you. And um, it seemed to me the SL60 was the way to go. So I got two when I came back from uh, the road from Montana and Chicago, I went to Adorama, picked up two SL60s and a uh, Glow 25-inch parabolic hood, I mean softbox, and uh, that is what I lit the entire movie with. Uh, everywhere I went, I was able to sh I was able to set up. And the best thing about the SL60s, they've got these gigantic long uh, uh, plugs. Uh, you know cables, so that doesn't matter where you are, that 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 that, that cable is long enough <laughs> to plug in almost anywhere. So I never had a problem plugging them in. So what I did was I used the one with the glow softbox as my, my my face fill, and I used the second one with the reflector that came with it as a high uh, three quarter backlight. And between that and the natural light in the rooms that we were shooting. It was beautiful. Quick to set up. They cooled down immediately. And th that was the shoot. I brought them everywhere I went. And, and they were perfect. So, you know, Lytra Pro, <laughs> SL60, yeah. Um, I'll be using them for uh, forever. Uh, I can't see any reason why I'm not going to bring those on every shoot that I do. But it certainly created a nice light. And being able to vary the intensities of both of them... Uh, made for really good, um, you know, good lighting scenarios wherever I was. So, Godox SL60s, boy, that's what we need. So let's talk about sound. Um, going in, I thought I was going to be using my really amazing, expensive Sennheiser uh, SM66 boom mic uh, for everything, but it turned out a, it was too big and got in the way. It was overkill. I mean, I used it a couple of times on the boom when I was able to set up the, the, the C-stand with, with the rig and everything, and then I got two mics going, and that was great. But that didn't really work for location shooting when I really was in a rush, and setting up that Fakakta stand and everything and running all that cable didn't make any sense. So the two purchases that I made going in was, one, my little preamp. Uh, it's a Saramonic. It's a two-channel, and you've got XLR, and you've got minis, and it runs on a 9-volt on a battery, and this was a godsend. Um, I could plug two mics in if I wanted to, but it, I, and I got this, I bought this sort of Mayfair system that clipped onto the rail, so literally it's like right here while I'm shooting, so I can adjust levels, um, and then... The this cable went right into the camera, so it was great. And then our little fuzzball, a little road. And you all have these, I know. Uh, it, this this is not a, a shock, um, but I got to tell you, it did the job. The sound on the movie coming home, it's very little nonsense that I had to deal with. There was some hiss in, in a couple of places, 
But uh, as far as the quality of the sound, this was perfect. This is all I needed. Uh, <laughs> set it up on top like this, and we were good to go for the entire shoot. Came home, sound was not one of the things that I needed to worry about. So that's the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it was informative. I hope my experience on the road will help you make choices for yourself when you need to go out and get, get some gear that will last. Uh, part two will be about the uh, post-production software that I wound up getting and the sort of the post-production process that I went through to finish the movie and the things that didn't work. So remember, uh, if you want to know more about my documentary, uh, The Only Angry Jew, Trumpism and the American Jewish Community, www.realbrooklynfilms.net. We've moved to Squarespace, which doesn't uh, support this channel yet. And if you want to get me, it's still Charlie at realbrooklynfilms.com. And remember, this video sponsored by Follow Focus Gears. If you click on the link below, you'll get 10% off any ring you want to buy. And it doesn't matter how many. For every ring, you will get 10% off forever and eternity. So call Sean, and he will hook you up for all your lenses. That's it. Remember, keep shooting.